In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you are all welcome to this little reflection on the 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time, Year B. Today, we are going to be reflecting on our call to greatness and what it truly means. We hear today Jesus speak to us in the Gospel reading about what true greatness is, and to that we have all been invited. The Gospel reading which is taken from the Gospel of St. Mark, reading from chapter 10, reading from verses 35 to 45, a particular place where Jesus responds to the request of the mother of the sons of Zebedee and says, reading from verse 42, And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are supposed to rule over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them, but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be a great person among you must be your servant. There is nothing wrong in coming to ask Jesus about reserving a special place in the kingdom of heaven by the mother of the sons of Zebedee. After all, every mother would like the best for her children. So also, we all want the best for ourselves. But Jesus uses that as an opportunity, even when they claim they understand the gravity of their request. But he goes on to use it and explain to his disciples what it truly means to be great. Greatness, according to our human understanding and measure, is quite different from the divine way of understanding. Most often than not, we use human wisdom to explain that which we feel is the right thing regarding our relationship with God. But Jesus is the voice of God who gives us the correct teaching. And that's why he draws our attention to it, because we have really not understood what this greatness is all about. Humanly speaking, when we talk about a great person, a great person is somebody who is so popular, very wealthy, after all, riches, money rules the world. One who has a lot of wealth, a lot of property, and so on and so forth. Remember last Sunday when we spoke about wisdom, as the antidote to the problems that riches pose to us, it somehow relates to what Jesus wants us to understand today. But the good thing is that since Jesus is the divine logic, the divine wisdom, he gives us the correct meaning and understanding of greatness. Jesus changes the paradigm. Very strange. He talks about greatness in service. And this greatness in service appears very strange, but when we analyze it, I think that is the meaning of greatness. And the whole world, if we put this into practice in our communities, in our homes, then true greatness would be the result. Greatness in this regard and the divine understanding belongs to the order of the good. We know that the good, by its nature, diffuses. Something that is good, or someone who might just be good, unquote, one's goodness is not for oneself. It is in relationship to those who are able to either discover, see, or feel the impact of this goodness. So also, greatness belongs to the order of good in the sense that greatness must be impacted on the lives of others for it to be seen as greatness. That is to say, being great does not lie in something we have, in something we possess, in something we reserve, or in something we hoard for ourselves. Rather, it lies in our opening up and doing. Greatness 
lies in doing, according to Jesus, because service is doing, being the servant of all. Now, just as goodness diffuses itself, so also greatness diffuses itself because one who is truly great does not go about parading himself or herself as being great. Rather, those who feel the impact, positive impact, of one's good deeds in charity are able to say how great one is. By then, one's light would be able to shine before men that God will be given the glory in heaven through the acts that are in line with the divine invitation for all of us to do the will of God. So it means that being great comes with its implications. And that is why Jesus says he is destined to suffer. And unless he suffers, we cannot be saved. And that is precisely where greatness lies in the ability to give up our will, to give up our comfort, to give up our pride, to give up our maybe esteem so that others would have a better esteem. So when we think about being great, we must always remember that it comes with its crosses. We do not look at ourselves, we look at others so that through our own services, in whatever situation we find ourselves, others may benefit from it. Then we can say to be great. And that is what Jesus wants us to understand to them. So basically, he is calling us to reflect on our lives, in our professional lives and in our vocational lives. There are certain vocations that maybe seem to be noble, other professions that are seen to be people who are great. But let us ask ourselves, how great am I in what I am doing? Maybe I'm a medical doctor. Do I truly treat people with respect and see that human dignity in them so that I can be seen to serving them for the sake of God? Maybe in your place of work, you are the director of a parastatal, or you are a teacher of a class, or you have people under you. How do you communicate this Christian understanding of greatness to these people? How does it impact their lives? Or, just, or do we just have an exaggerated concept of ourselves? If we do, I think this is what we must break down. Because greatness here is not about occupying thrones, occupying offices, occupying seat, having a say. No, greatness lies in doing in serving, impacting onto the lives of others. So I'd like us all to reflect today. Jesus draws our attention. Just maybe we have been led off track. We have wandered far away from what true greatness is. It's about time we turned back and retraced our steps to follow the life of service. Perhaps you may feel, well, I've just been doing that. I want to say to you there is a room for improvement. And just maybe we have been far away from the status quo. Our God is a God of new beginning. Our God is a God of second chance. Why don't we take this opportunity, reflect on our lives, and then improve or do better? Maybe by going to confession, communion with God, and that when God commune with us and we with God, then we will dispose enough to do in his will. May the Lord Jesus help us with his spirit to be able to do his will through Christ our Lord. And may the Almighty God bless and keep you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Have a blessed week ahead, and may you practice what you believe. Thank you.